Does the Bible really say that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are God? Well, that's one of several things we're going to look at as we wrap up our look at the Trinity today. It is January 24th, 2020. I'm Pastor John Blevins, and this is our daily devotion. We're going to begin in God's Word this morning, as we always do, right where we need to be. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, we'll look at verses 11 through 14. This is the end of uh, this letter written by Paul to the Corinthian church, uh, an ending uh, that is brought uh, as a, a closing benediction and blessing to God's people. Finally, brothers, rejoice, aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So this is one of several passages summarized and and pulled together uh, by the pastor's theologians of Westminster Standards uh, as they were writing Westminster Larger Catechism, question 11, our theology section that we're going to look at uh, today in our devotion. Question 11 asks, How doth it appear that the Son and the Holy Ghost are God equal with the Father? Answer, The Scriptures manifest that the Son and the Holy Ghost are God equal with the Father, ascribing unto them such names, attributes, works, and worship as are proper to God only. That gets us back to our question. As we are uh, wrapping up a a couple days, we've been moving through in our devotions, looking at the Trinity, what the Bible has to say about it, uh, some of the good Westminster theology that summarizes what the Bible says about it, and learning a little bit about the Trinity. And that question was, does the Bible really, does the Bible really say Father, Son, Spirit, or God? Or is that just something that has been pulled together? Well, as you move throughout the scriptures, it is there. If you're doing a Bible a reading plan, reading regularly through the scriptures, just pay attention and you will, will pick up on it. Old Testament, New Testament, uh, it is there. Uh, you can also do a little bit of a study on it. There are all types of scriptures. All In the Old Covenant, there are scriptures, the New Covenant, uh, that are there for you to mine, read. But we're going to look at just, just three just to give you a a little taste, to whet your appetite. So we're going to turn to Acts chapter 5, and we're going to start with the Holy Spirit. You know, there are many people that uh, we talked about the errors that folks have uh, that try to, sadly, they understand or or, or try to teach the the Holy Spirit almost like the Force. And I don't know, maybe, maybe it's a little bit of the Star Wars craze that's been going for the last few decades, but... This idea that the, that the Spirit is like the force. The Spirit is, is a force that God uses, but that is not what the Bible says. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is God. And we talked about that earlier uh, as we talked about the difference between one God, three persons. The difference between being and personhood. So go back and look at those uh, devotions from the last couple of days if you haven't had a chance to see them. But Acts chapter 5, verse 3 and 4, talking about the Holy Spirit here. But Peter said to Ananias, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. We see right here in this this section, Peter, he says, Holy Spirit is God. And of course, there's several other places throughout the scriptures you can go, but that is just one example that's really clear, good place for us to start. 
We're going to turn to John, the Gospel according to John, chapter 1. So we just saw Holy Spirit, God the Spirit. Now we're going to look at Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son, second person of the Godhead. And we're going to read John chapter 1, first two verses, 1 and 2, and then we're going to jump down to 14 just because of our time together. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Then down to 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now you go back and read that entire chapter on your own, even if you're familiar with it, prayerfully work your way through it, but you see uh, clearly the unpacking here as John is writing, as the Holy Spirit is moving John along. The Lord Jesus Christ, he is the God-man. Jesus is the incarnate deity. He is the second person of the Trinity, God the Son. Jesus, as we know here, even as it speaks of taking on flesh, dwelling amongst us, being God, he is the God-man. Tons of other places to go. Go to Isaiah and just read through. And There's lots of different psalms that are also helpful here. And look at the Messianic prophecies talking about the coming Messiah. And it is clear that God promised he was coming and he was going to be the one to save his people. And as you move your way through there, uh, it is full, 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 full of wonderful, helpful passages. We're going to turn to 1 Peter now. 1 Peter chapter 1, and we're just going to read verse 3. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Then it goes on from there, but clearly talking about God the Father. So as we recap our, our look over these last few days, specifically at the Trinity, we just want, I wanted you to see a few particular verses that show that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit are referred to is God in the scriptures. So what we've been talking about these last few days isn't just the ideas of men, but this is truth. And again, for your challenge, for your application as you drive this home, what you keep in mind is that as you worship God, it drives you into a desire to worship each person of the Godhead, Father, Son, Spirit, and that immediately drives you back to worshiping God. And it is always rejoicing, always praising him. We think about, we talked about salvation as the father chose, as the son redeemed and the spirit applies. Uh, we think of prayer. We pray to the father in the power of the spirit, in the righteousness and merit of the Lord Jesus Christ. We live with the Holy Spirit indwelling us who brings us into union with Christ. Jesus being the only mediator between God and man brings us into fellowship with the Father, and the Godhead. The Trinity is important. It is important. So it is good. Keep studying and let you let your study, your reading of God's Word, drive you to worship always. Dear Heavenly Father, Almighty God, may we be those that worship you at all times with hearts overflowing with thanksgiving and rejoicing. Even as we think about what you've revealed about who you are, Father, Son, Spirit, one God, three persons. May that in and of itself drive us to awe and worship and praise. Father, we, we pray these things to you and ask for a wonderful day that would glorify you as we pray in the power of the Spirit and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it was excellent being with you today. If you enjoyed the devotion, why don't you go ahead and uh, put a like there. would appreciate that. Subscribe so that you'll be able to keep up with us and click notifications.